Okay, Jean, Emmanuel, we're going to give you a quick break. Time for you to uh, recover. For the first panel of uh, this uh, evening session, we were going to have Monique Couture, who is uh, the partner and chair of the INTA International Domain Name Issues Committee. Unfortunately, she could not make it. She had a legal um, issue, uh, urgent issue to address, and uh, therefore she uh, could not make it. But we have someone. We have someone to replace her, a talented, prestigious person, an expert on no domain names, David Tyre. Would you please join us? David is going to be with uh, Romuald, who is uh, responsible for the ecosystem development at OP3FT. So let's uh, start this uh, session on priority registration period for trademark holders. How are you, Romuald? I'm great. Aren't you uh, too nervous? Well, I'm a little nervous after what we just heard. Uh, it's going to be tough. Oh, I'm sure you can do it. I'm sure you can do it. We have a quick video. Uh, could you sing a dance as we go? Just kidding. So let's start the priority registration period for trademark holders. It was between April the 15th and uh, June the 15th, 2015. Romuald, could you very briefly explain what this period was all about and um, tell us a little bit um, about the achievements. This period finished just uh, just days ago. Yes, first of all, um, uh, thank you. Um, let me just remind you um, about the, uh, the objectives um, and uh, what OP3FT did to meet these objectives. And then, of course, we will um, discuss the, uh, the results. So the uh, priority registration period for trademark holders is mainly for legal experts. Tonight, we've been talking about the ecosystem. So for the next minutes, I would like to spend some time about legal considerations and uh, trademarks. The philosophy uh, behind this priority registration period, the rationale, rather, uh, there were three reasons. First of all, we wanted to inform. OP3FT is a non-for-profit organization with an open standard, and uh, its vision is the general interest, and therefore wanted to inform as many trademark holders around the world that this technology was available, first of all, and uh, that uh, explained what OP3FT had in store for them and how they could anticipate. So that was the number one objective, inform. The second objective was uh, respect, respect for trademark holders. When you look at the history of internet, the, the, the history of the web is very peculiar. And we realized that it was absolutely necessary for brands to anticipate and have uh, and, and anticipate on, on, on new names, um, for example. The three, the third point is protection. OP3 FT wants to deliver a protective environment for the ecosystem and. Uh, that was the, uh, it, we felt uh, quite adamant about protecting the different stakeholders. Here are two clauses that show uh, or that, that describe and reflect the philosophy of OP3FT to, uh, about this period, this registration period. We, di we didn't want to scare people. We didn't want to tell them, hurry up, do it now, do it quickly. Instead, we tried to be very supportive, and we created communities. And it was very interesting to see what happened and how, how things went. So we developed a number of things. First of all, we created legal resources. A lot of work was put into these legal resources. 
Amri was talking about arbitration centers, for example, to implement the URDPF, which is a, a, a way to, 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 to solve uh, litigations, uh, disputes. We also uh, created the rules for that particular registration period, priority period. We also uh, developed uh, the user policy, the, uh, the programs technology user policy. Uh, so all these legal resources were put together in order to set the framework for uh, trademark uh, holders. So I uh, urge you to go to uh, the site, frogans.org, and, and, and we've had unanimous support and feedback. All stakeholders consider that uh, the quality is, uh, the resources are, are top quality. And uh, so, so this is, uh, this is very, very good. Again, the objective was to protect, and uh, this was done with uh, great uh, quality resources. We also organized workshops. We uh, had six workshops. These were webinars. They were organized on your DPF in order to explain in, you know, a, a very straightforward way uh, to trademark holders what the period was about um, and, and why it was important. We also developed uh, dedicated uh, websites. You can go to quickstart.frogrance.org. Um, the websites were developed to explain at a glance what the Frogrance project is about. So we really tried to, to make the information accessible, easy to understand, because people need to take decisions quickly. We also organized a number of uh, events, uh, meetings, These events were very positive. We received a lot of good feedback. People considered they uh, were very relevant. And um, we also had a press campaign. On this map, we have uh, different events that were organized over the past months. As you can see, it very much was a global um, event. So we have key events plus the uh, uh, press or media coverage. The day before yesterday, we had more than 500 communications uh, about the, the, the subject. And we uh, were in more than 20 events. So we had international events, big major events. And uh, we were also invited by registration bodies. We were uh, invited by a number of other organizations as well to uh, present the Frogrance uh, project. Uh, uh, we can come back to this for later when we talk about the uh, last month's INTA meeting. So how were these events uh, chosen? Um, looking at the map here, we can see that uh, uh, some are fairly technical. Uh, there is the French tech tour, uh, which uh, is more commercial. <clears throat> it's really more about uh, French opportunities uh, abroad. You mentioned the ICANN meeting as well. What was the policy? Uh, what was the decision-making process uh, to choose these events? Well. The first events we attended were uh, international events, events with a lot of uh, supranational organizations such as uh, ICANN or INTA, for example. You may not be familiar with INTA. INTA is really the uh, biggest organization worldwide with more than 9,000 members. And they are really, it's an, uh, working primarily on, on trademarks and brands. So in addition to that, we've also uh, taken part in, in technical and promotional events, generally smaller ones. So one of the reasons for these was to inform people about the programs 
uh, project. It's really about site uh, publishing. And we wanted to uh, take the opportunity of these events to inform people also about the uh, priority registration period. OK, moving on to the next uh, slide. The next slide is about the results. So I think we can say we truly met our objectives. When we were talking to uh, trademark holders, um, the people we've seen felt reassured, reassured about uh, what we had put in place. Very positive feedback about the project uh, project's maturity. People felt reassured. And this is something we are very proud of. It's very much part of our uh, DNA to provide a safe and fully protected environment. So I think OP3FT can be very proud because that's exactly how people felt, protected. Second, the birth of an ecosystem. Again, today, this event is very much about the ecosystem. And what we have seen uh, over the past months is that this ecosystem is emerging. Uh, we've seen the example with um, Aester. Uh, we're seeing that things are happening. Uh, uh, but uh, if you go to fcr.frogans, uh, you can see the list of FCR administrators. Yesterday, we had more than 10 uh, FCR account administrators. So these administrators can be registration bodies, for example, like the one we saw earlier. They could be, sometimes they're consultants, law firms, sometimes they're brands, brands who decide to, uh, you know, work, uh, be more, become more active in this business. So the, 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 this ecosystem is shaping up. And uh, when you attend events uh, in the internet world or brands, uh, more and more people have heard about the project and have a lot of questions about the project. And I really uh, realize that for them, it, it is becoming um, important as well to, uh, to position themselves. We talked about account administrators, but we, we could also talk about registered addresses. If you want to see the addresses that have been registered, uh, there again, you can go to fcr.frogans. There is a tab on there where you can, which is called public data, and you can check uh, all the uh, the registrations, and you will see on that list that a lot of very prestigious companies, such as Amazon, for example, have uh, during this period, during the priority period, registered their um, their brand, their trademark, and uh, since uh, on on. Since Monday, the, the the period is now has opened to entrepreneurs, and we're seeing very, very interesting names. We have uh, Casino Etoile, Sex uh, Star, and so on. So this shows that the ecosystem is uh, is very bubbly. Uh, people are really taking an actively part. So this campaign has been successful. Last but not least, it was a truly global information campaign. Again, I think uh, the map we, shot, we saw earlier clearly showed that uh, we had global presence. Uh, the promotion team has uh, six people uh, at OP3FT, so we uh, traveled uh, many miles to uh, preach the world. OK, uh, very good. Very good, Ramyold. Uh, you've done uh, a huge amount of work for those, uh, for those of you who have attended uh, FTCs uh, in the past, uh, it's almost a, a revolution what's happening, uh, what happened between FTC 3 and FTC 4. We opened registrations, registrations were made, and uh, everybody noticed that you have, uh, you, you, you mentioned two names, casino and sex. <laughs> And we considerably increased uh, the number of uh, uh, FCRAAs. And correct me if I'm wrong. I think we had three FCRAAs uh, uh, at the last conference. And today you said we had more than 10. So that shows we've come a very long way. We had registrations and. Uh, uh, I think we've switched gears, and this is uh, this is quite uh, quite important to keep in mind. 
Absolutely. We've multiplied uh, this number by four. And uh, so there is a real momentum. And I'm sure it will continue. We're getting a lot of solicitations. And um, it's also very much what Amory said. It's, it's a calm and peaceful revolution. Uh, but it may become less calm uh, with things really picking up and this momentum. So, uh, as uh, we said, we've had a lot of events. We'd like to give you an example of one event. Uh, we went to INTA in San Diego uh, a month ago, and uh, the Frogans project was presented uh, to the uh, Internet Subcommittee. They work on, uh, uh, on domain names. We have David here who is with us. David is a member of the subcommittee, and uh, we would like to uh, have a conversation with David at this point about this uh, presentation which happened a month ago. David, would you please introduce yourself? Yes, first of all, notice um, I, my name is not Monique. I'm not Monique. And uh, Monique is. Uh, in a court somewhere, I can't remember if it's Toronto or Ottawa, but she's working hard. And uh, she kindly asked me if I was, uh, if I would fill in for her. Uh, so here I am. So I'm not Monique, I'm David Tyre, I'm a lawyer, and I specialize in intellectual and industrial pro uh, property as well as uh, information technology, and I'm, uh, of course, uh, very much involved with INTA as well. Right, so with, within INTA, you've been a member of a subcommittee. Could you tell us a little bit about about these uh, INTA subcommittees? What is, in, what is a subcommittee about? We have cocktails and we have fun, uh, but there is more. There is more. Let me tell you a little bit about INTA. INTA is uh, uh, originally a U.S. organization, but uh, it has become, you know, a, a truly really global organization. It, it recently celebrated its uh, 100, 137th uh, uh, annual congress, so it's uh, it's an old lady. Uh, there are about 50 subcommittees. Uh, or committees. One is the Internet Committee, uh, and I'm a member of a subcommittee within that committee. Uh, we work on international domain names, so uh, country code top level domain. Okay, so within that committee, what is your role? Uh, well, we do a lot of thinking. Um, we're a think tank, so to see, so, so to speak, and we have two-year terms, and we have a number of, of objectives for each two-year term. We were, we've worked on different things. One of the things we worked on in the past was to work on whiz bases. Uh, and the problem of new TLDs and IDNs uh, we're seeing today with with bases. So, and, and likewise, some bases in Latin are eligible in other countries. We also work uh, uh, or promote CCTLD uh, registers for uh, dispute resolution solutions. David, I have a question for you. So you have a, a committee on CCTLD, national extensions. Uh, so does that mean there is no committee for uh, the others? Well, there are other subcommittees, and one specifically works on all the generics. But uh, there is some o overlapping. We do have uh, intercommittee working groups uh, on, on WIS, for example, or dispute settlements. Uh, so the, the, the Internet Committee, at the end of the day, uh, brings all that information together. So within these committees, you're working with legal, people who work on addressing, but also internet. So during one of these subcommittee meetings, we were able to present Frogans. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, the feedback? Um, what was it like? What, what, what did you hear about the Frogans uh, project? La uh, première. Well, you said two very important things. One is trying to find the right balance between property law and trademark law and the internet and addressing issues. 
And the second thing that you said is that you have a population of lawyers. I can hear you smiling in the room, presenting a new technology. What happened? What were the reactions? I saw some people being surprised. Oh, okay, that's a weird thing. It wasn't written article blah blah, the court ruled that, so it was difficult for them to understand. And then we saw the demos, like the ones we saw earlier, and all of a sudden we saw that the few neurons left in the brains of this, those lawyers are starting to be busy. And they said, okay, that's interesting. How does the addressing system work? What's your system with an asterisk, a star? It's not a domain name. No, it's not. So we start back to basics. And we have to explain all issues related to addressing. OK, how do we do to protect uh, trademarks, etc., etc.? So same questions as the one we've had in our communities for quite a number of years, which was quite reassuring, actually, for this community. And what was quite reassuring for the committee was the uh, dispute resolution process, which is specifically dedicated to Frogan's addresses. It's quite good to hear you both, because what you described earlier, Romuald, is the same kind of work, spreading the gospel that uh, David did at Inter. Were the comments always the same? Because we talked about the good performance levels that we had for priority periods, so quite obviously the message went through, but we feel like asking you both if this first feeling would be uh, that of lack of understanding. Well, for all aspects related to legal resources, uh, the fact that we have RPF, uh, arbitration centers, reserve terms for uh, uh, registration, etc., etc. When people start asking a question, they pull the string, and little by little, they feel reassured. So the feeling I have is that, yes, people are reassured. But then, in terms of recorded registration and positioning, the Frogans project arrives in the wave of new extensions. So we're faced with an audience which, over the last past month, has had to face sunrise periods in which they're very much uh, busy with the registration and domain, domain names. So we have to make them understand that there is no domain name in the Frogans project. So when you talk to people for whom a domain name is uh, their daily bread and butter, you have to make them become aware of that. And then second, and that's a comment I'm making, but brands or trademarks are changing their strategies. They've been doing so over the last few uh, months. Before the new extensions, brands were de establishing defensive strategies, but now they're paying more attention and they choose carefully where they want to be positioned. So we come in with new addresses, so we need and make them realize that we're here to produce Frogan's site. I fully agree with what you said. So, like a kid learning to walk, uh, you help them and then they start walking freely, but they know where they're going. So once we've managed to go through this first barrier, the users, the legal community is reassured because they understand it's not dangerous. For brand leaders, you're more in an idea of I can be submitted to cyber squatting and my rights can be attacked. And we consider that as a prejudice, because it is. But does it have any consequence? If you have a small scratch, it's not necessarily all that serious. So right holders are now thinking in terms of strategy, in terms of project, and not OK. I collect all the marbles. I don't know if I have any friend to play with, but at least I have the marbles. Okay, thank you. Before I release you, 
so that you can start working on uh, flying towards other horizons. I'll turn to see if we have any questions to one of our friends. I'm looking at the room to see if anyone wants to ask a question. Well, apparently you were crystal clear, gentlemen, so I want to thank you, Romuald and David. And now I'm going to leave you and hand over to Jean Emmanuel, who is going to be your host for the rest of the evening. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us and for being with us each year. And of course, we have a, we'll meet again for FTC5. <coughs> And over to Jean Emmanuel and Philippe Collin. Thank you very much indeed to Stefan. It was a pleasure. And of course, we'll meet again for our next conference. Will you make this commitment? You have witnesses in the room. Thank you very much indeed, Stefan.